with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stay your life on. Take it easy, because it's time for my ultimate slow cooking. Slow cooking is one of the best weapons in the chef's arsenal. Not only is it easy, it's also an incredible way to transform meat into mouth-wateringly melting dishes. Mastering the art of slow cooking is something every cook should learn. First up, my phenomenal slow-cooked beef short ribs. Slow cooking is a brilliant way of getting lots of extra depth and intensity into your dishes. The secret is to lock in all those flavours at the start and let the ingredients do their thing as it cooks. These are beef short ribs, and there's basically five to six bones across there. And as the short rib cooks, it sticks to that bone. The bone implants flavour, and the meat just sort of melts. Cooked slowly, gives it that nice level of intensity. Slice alongside the bone, straight down. You can see that marbling? That sort of disappears and disintegrates. I'm cooking them in a roasting tray. Get it on the heat until nice and hot. Season the beef short ribs beautifully. Olive oil in, bone on the top. I'll we'll start colouring that in. Really important to give the beef short ribs a really nice sear. If you didn't brown the meat off, it goes in the oven and it looks like boiled meat. So you really want that nice, dark, rich colouring. Just cut the garlic in half, slide that down the side. That's going to give that beef an amazing flavour. To give body to the sauce, stir in a heaped teaspoon of tomato puree. I'm just hitting the bottom of the pan with that tomato puree. And we call it cooking out the tomato puree. Otherwise, it just goes in there raw, and it gives this sort of tartness to the braised short ribs. Red wine in. Don't use an expensive bottle of red wine. There's no need. Bring the wine up to the boil and reduce it. This burns off the alcohol and concentrates the flavour. It makes a big difference when you reduce the red wine down by half, because it gives that nice, dark, rich intensity. Look at my garlic. That is just going to sweeten everything up. Incredible. Stock in. Beef stock, perfect. Chicken stock, fine. Just to about an inch underneath the beef short ribs. Bring it up to the boil. To lock in all that flavour as the beef ribs slow cook, cover them so they braise from the bottom and steam from the top. Into the oven, two and a half hours. 170 to 180 degrees. In she goes. The great thing about slow cooking is you do most of the work in advance and then put your feet up. Five or ten minutes before the beef short ribs come out of the oven, start your garnish. This is light cured pancetta. We want nice thick lardons, nice big thick sticks of crispy bacon. These are delicious chestnut mushrooms. I'm not going to slice them, I'm just going to cut them in half. But look at the colour on those lardons now. All the white, raw fat has disappeared. The lardons have shrunk right down. And all we've got there now is the proper bacon. Mushrooms in. Beautiful. So the mushrooms get seasoned from the bacon. I'm pan frying these separately to the beef so they remain crisp and have a different texture. Mm. Leave that to cool down. Now, this is like Christmas Day for me when you unwrap that foil. Wait to see what's underneath it. <laughs> wow. They smell incredible. Lift and place on your tray. Mm. Beautiful. To make a fantastic, rich, deep sauce, press the soft roasted garlic through a sieve into the cooking juices. Want all that nice pureed garlic coming through there. Because that is going to make the most amazing flavour. <laughs> Scrape all of that off the sieve. Nice. And then just start sieving all that lovely brazen liquor. Whoa. In. That smells delicious. Take your sauce and just glaze. Do them individually. 
They deserve that respect. Spoon on your bacon and your mushrooms. Beautiful. Be generous with these mushrooms. I'm telling you, they taste amazing. Flat leaf parsley. I want that freshness over those amazing ribs. Incredible. Never ever be embarrassed about going to your butcher and asking for cheap cuts because the results are incredible. Amazing beef braised short ribs with bacon and mushrooms. Mushrooms are one of my all-time favorite ingredients. I use chestnut mushrooms with the beef short ribs because I love their firm texture and nutty taste. But there's a huge range of other mushrooms that are great for slow-cooked dishes. And when it comes to buying them, there's one expert greengrocer who's a fountain of knowledge, Borough Market's Fred Foster. Started off on uh, my dad's stall in Pimlico, really. He had a salad stall. With over 20 years of experience, he could actually write his own mushroom encyclopedia. Mushrooms, as soon as you pick them, the moisture starts coming out of them. So you need to buy them when they're fresh. Certain products you smell for flavor, and they tend to be fruits. Mushrooms don't smell nice at all. They smell kind of metallic, really. So you have to use your eyes as your guide of what you buy with mushrooms. It's really, really important. Wild mushrooms are literally grown wild in the forests. They're just quality wherever they are. This is morel mushroom. A fantastic product, so hard to find in the wild. It's almost got an apricot -y type of flavor. Earthy, woody, and of course, as you cook it, the flavor increases. For extra flavor and texture, highly prized morels are ideal when added to slow cooked stews and casseroles, as are the Trompet de la Mort, which have a deliciously rich flavor. Another wild type to try is the chanterelle. Its subtle fruity flavor is delicious and perfect fried with butter, parsley, and garlic. When you're dealing with wild mushrooms, you need to clean them. It can be quite a slow process. It's with a soft brush. Don't, don't use water. Never use water with mushrooms. It deteriorates the mushroom rapidly. Oyster mushrooms are very meaty mushrooms. Just a lovely, silky, smooth flavor. Really nice. How do you tell uh, whether it's fresh? Those gills are bright. Never cut an oyster mushroom, always tear it. Look at the whiteness of that. Beautiful. That would be gray if it was old. Although also found wild, oyster mushrooms are more commonly cultivated along with a similar type, the enoki. Their delicate taste is great in salads and soups. Finally, Fred saved the best until last. And of course, the pinnacle is the truffle. They are really, really sought after. The smell is so intense. That smell, it's, it's hard to describe because it's such a unique smell. The more expensive the truffle, the more intense the smell. So that's why you use such a small amount on a dish. It's amazing the way they get these. They used to use pigs, of course, but they don't do that anymore. They use dogs still because the pigs used to eat them all. This magical tasting fungi is by weight one of the most expensive foods in the world. It's phenomenal eaten raw, shaped over pasta or risottos, or a drizzle of truffle oil turns slow cooked stews into something out of this world. People are actually scared of mushrooms, aren't they? So it's, it's amazing, really. They shouldn't be, because take away the fear and just close your eyes and taste them. They're just amazing. They're, they are amazing. Cooking all the ingredients in one dish helps to lock in taste and get great flavors working together. Here are three recipes that turn simple ingredients into amazing dishes. First up, a fantastically aromatic melt-in-the-mouth treat, pork neck curry with mango salsa. For the curry paste, add chopped lemongrass, chili, fresh ginger, garlic, and cafe lime leaf to a pestle and mortar. Next, put in aromatic ground cinnamon and coriander, a pinch of salt, black pepper, then bash it into a rough paste. Finally, add olive oil to loosen and your paste is done. Now onto the pork neck. Add a glug of olive oil to a hot pan and brown the diced meat carefully, making sure each side hits the heat, locking in that flavor. Remove, and in the same pan, cook sliced onions until brown around the edges. Add the curry paste and fry to release all the intense flavors. Then put the pork back in, along with the coconut milk, and stir. Next, add chicken stock, palm sugar, 
more kaffir lime leaves, soy sauce, and fish sauce to taste. Then simply simmer for an hour. Slow cooked for succulents, spicy, super easy to make, and wonderful served with fresh mango salsa, pork neck curry. My next easy slow cook recipe is incredible spicy Szechuan chicken thighs. First, marinate the thighs with soy sauce and Shaoxing wine, which is made from fermented rice and tastes similar to dry sherry. Chicken thighs do a lot of work, so they need more cooking, but cooked properly, they're moist and they're the tastiest part of the bird. Next, add rice vinegar, water, then season and leave to marinate for up to two hours. Then chop garlic, chili, and ginger. Add olive oil to a hot pan and fry until softened. Add Szechuan peppercorns and orange zest. Next, add the marinated chicken thighs along with a the marinade. Then throw in a pinch of sugar and fry the chicken until it's lovely and brown and the sauce is deliciously thick. Finish with chopped spring onions, a glug of soy sauce, and a few drops of sesame seed oil. Marinated for flavor, sweet and spicy chicken, a fuss-free wonder. My final slow-cooked dish that transforms simple ingredients into unforgettable food is simple beef brisket. Start by seasoning the meat well. The brisket is a cut of beef from the breast. It's inexpensive, but it's fit for royalty with long, slow cooking. Place it into a hot casserole dish with a little olive oil and brown on all sides. Next, make a tasty broth to flavor the meat. Into the dish, add chopped carrots, celery, a whole bulb of garlic cut in half, peppercorns, aromatic cloves, and freshly ground nutmeg. Pour in hot water to braise the brisket. Bring to the boil and cover tightly. Then transfer the dish to a low oven and cook for three to four hours. Cook low and slow, the results are amazing. Tender melt-in-the-mouth meat. Fantastic with roast potatoes or in sandwiches with lots of mustard, but I like it best with tangy piccalilli in the oven in under 10 minutes. Then all you have to do is sit back and wait. So easy and absolutely delicious. What's not to love about my succulent beef brisket? This is my ultimate cookery course, 100 recipes to stake your life on. Soon, I'll be teaching you a wonderful slow-cooked dessert. And look at the color on them. The smell is incredible. But first, five more of my 100 tips to make your home cooking easier. Starting with how to cook duck breast perfectly the slow way. Duck breast, never be scared about cooking this bird. Absolutely delicious, very healthy. First, oven on, 200 degrees. And then, salt, pepper. Now, the salt will help to extract the water out of the fat. Non-stick pan, no oil, but start the duck breast in the pan cold. Skin side down, it feels and sounds a little bit weird. But as we put them into a cold pan and turn the heat up gradually, it starts to release the fat. If we put them into a hot pan, it seals them in and the fat stays in there. We want to render that fat down. 90% of that duck breast will be cooked on its skin. It keeps the duck nice and moist, but more importantly, it stays crispy. Once the fat comes out, turn the duck over. Nice, high, hot heat. Seal the duck. Now they're going in the oven, skin side down, 200, six to eight minutes. If your pan's got a plastic handle on it, then transfer the duck breast onto a tray, but make sure you put the tray into the oven to get hot first. Cooking duck is like cooking a piece of beef. Um, you can't slice it piping hot, all the goodness runs out. Just quickly turn it over, push your fingers in there, and it's slightly resistant, but still quite bouncy. And that confirms they're quite pink in the center. But the important part now 
is leaving that to rest, let them cool down, and then we'll slice them. Keep that excess duck fat, and there you go. Next time you're sauteing potatoes, you just take them to a completely different level. Now, slicing the duck, just slice it at an angle, not too thin. If you slice it thinly, it goes cold quickly, so nice thick slices. Nice crispy skin on top, and a beautiful, plump, roasted duck. All the white fat gone, nice crispy skin, and absolutely delicious. Mm. Another slow cooking tip is, when slow cooking stews and casseroles, fat will rise to the surface. To get rid of any excess oils, my tip is to remove them with kitchen paper before serving. This also works brilliantly on gravies and sauces. Many great slow-cooked dishes start by browning the meat. As the meat cooks, lots of flavors get stuck to the pan. To get it into your sauce, deglaze with wine, stock, or vinegar. Never add soft herbs at the beginning of slow cooking. They're all too delicate. The tip is to add them at the end for that hit of fresh flavor and vibrant color. A great tip when frying fish is to always fry skin side down to keep it crispy. And always lay the fillets away from you when adding to the pan to prevent hot oil from splashing towards you. Slow cooking isn't exclusive to just savory dishes. It's a clever way to transform fruit into wonderful desserts, giving them an amazing sticky, jammy intensity. Invest a bit of patience, and my next recipe pays off big time. Indulgent and bursting with flavor. Caramelized figs with ricotta. Slow cooking can also take desserts to a whole new level. A gentle, long cook can really bring out that wonderful, rich, sticky sweetness and that depth of flavor in fruits. These are black figs. They are suited to slow cooking, roasting, better than the green figs, because this outside skin is so durable. This is an amazing way of roasting figs, and it's so easy, yet so delicious. Lay your figs out in rows. Take some rosemary and just peel that down. Get that really nice fragrant stem. Get your scissors, trim the edge. Almost where you've got a bit of a sort of sharp point. Bring your three figs together and just thread the top of each fig nice and gently. Rosemary works wonderfully with sweet dishes. As the figs roast in the oven, the stalk will impart a lovely, subtle flavor. Beautiful. Dust the figs with ice and sugar, then coat them with a generous splash of balsamic vinegar. Leave them to sit there for five minutes. And they sort of marinate. I know it sounds odd to use vinegar in your dessert, but trust me, it gives the dish a fantastic sweet and sour taste. I'm going to make a really nice caramel. Four or five tablespoons of sugar. Now, flatten that out and get it nice and even. When the sugar is even, caramel cooks evenly. It's changing now. You can see it melting from the outside in. The one thing you don't do is shake the pan rapidly. You can see it almost like sort of a lake defrosting and it's hitting to the center, bubbling. It's still not dark enough yet. It's getting there. Turn the gas down and stay in control. Let the sugar melt until it turns a dark amber color. The secret behind any good caramel is just stopping it from overcooking. Lovely. Take that off the gas. Knob of butter in there. Just gently whisk in. The butter is cooling the caramel down. You'll see it changing color to like a cafe au lait. Next, add a glug of the balsamic vinegar. Nice. Beautiful. Got that nice, dark richness of the caramel. A little touch of water in there. That way the caramel doesn't go too thick. Now put the caramel back on the heat. Take your figs and sort of place them in gently. Lovely. And then just add all that lovely little marinade. Mmm, don't waste that. It's amazing stuff there. No. Ice and sugar and balsamic vinegar. There's something so tasty. Based 
those figs because the skin gets nice and crispy on the outside and the fig sort of just absorbs the caramel. It's delicious. It's so easy. Now, into the oven. 190 for 10 minutes. Almost doubled in size. Now look at the colour on them. The smell is incredible onto your plate. They're a lot heavier because they've actually started absorbing that caramel. Now douse the figs with caramel and serve with ricotta cheese. The freshness of that ricotta goes brilliantly well with the figs. I'm going to finish that now with some zest and then some little nibbed almonds and the rich, creamy jam texture of the fig with the ricotta. Okay, brilliant. That is an amazing way of slow roasting fruit and taking figs to a completely new level. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Now it's time to settle down and enjoy some slow-cooked favourites. One of the brilliant things about slow cooking is there's often very little preparation required, and it's the oven that does all the work. My first recipe is packed with strong, confident flavours, and with the oven taking the strain, it's a pleasure to make. Delicious slow braised stuffed lamb breast. One of the secrets to slow cooking is to be robust and really get stuck in. Big, bold flavours work brilliantly well, so don't be precious. This is gutsy cooking at its absolute best. These are lamb breasts, a beautiful cheap cut, and it's sort of tucked alongside the rib. They've been boned out, the skin has been taken off. I'm going to roll them, stuff them, and braise them. Braising simply means cooking in liquid on a low heat, making the meat divinely tender. Now, open them up and give them a really good season. Season them both sides, inside and out. Really important. It doesn't look like a real weighty, dense cut of meat. But once it's beautifully slow braised, it's just like melting lamb. It's incredible. I'm going to season the breast with some dried oregano. Put a heat in there, some chili flakes, lemon zest. Put some amazing salted anchovies in there now. They almost melt inside the lamb. So the balance of flavors work beautifully. Yeah. Pull it down towards you and roll that nice and tightly. That's what I'm looking for. String. We just need to tie them three times. One at each end and one in the middle. I fell in love with this dish years ago when I first started working in Paris because we had all the lamb in from the Pyrenees. The nice thing is they can be done the day before. Pan on, olive oil in. Get that oil nice and hot. Lamb in. Really important to get some nice colour on there. Whilst they're browning, slice the onion. The lamb's going to be cooking for two and a half hours, so don't slice the onions too thinly, otherwise they'll burn. Garlic and leave whole. Got the colour on them. Look at that. Beautiful. Take them out. Onions in and garlic. Straight in. Lovely. That's the secret about slow braising. You never change pans. Why? For all the goodness is in that one pan. A few chili seeds in there. Oregano, nice pinch. A little bit of lemon in there. I'm going to do to the onions what I did to the lamb. Next, my capers. Fire them off. Get them exploding at the bottom of the pan. They get nice and crispy. Next, my black olives. Now, white wine. Mmm, bring that up to the boil. 
deglazing the pan as well. A rinse in the bottom of that pan. And now the flavour in there is just extraordinary. Now, we add our tomatoes. Let's puncture those plum tomatoes. Then simply place the lamb breast back in the pot and remember to taste. That's nice. Lid on. Into the oven. 170. Two, two and a half hours, and forget about it. Whoa, beautiful. All that has reduced down to this amazing, nice tomato sauce. And the lamb has kept its colour. Look at that. It's braised. Beautifully, very carefully, get your little bits there. Slice off, pull off the little bits of string. This is why I get really excited. The secret is not to slice it too thinly. Look at that. You can smell the lemon. It's hard to believe when you slice through the centre there that that is a very cheap cut of meat. I'm salivating. I love this. I mean, it's just incredible. Pick up the tomatoes and the olives and the onions. An amazing, rich sauce. Take your lamp and sort of just sit it on. It looks incredible. And that, for me, is why chefs get so excited with cheap cuts, because the end results are incredible. Delicious breast of lamb with lemon anchovies, chili, and oregano. Slow cooking is a fantastic way to develop delicious, deep flavors. Here are three of my easy one-pot wonders. Minimum preparation, long cook, and an amazing, wonderful taste. First up, easy bolito misto, a classic Italian mixed meat dish. I'm starting with some Italian fennel sausages. Fry them until coloured, making sure all sides are nicely browned. Set them aside, then slice chorizo, a spicy Spanish sausage with a wonderful smoky taste, and fry it so it releases all its incredible flavour. Next, chop carrots, celery, garlic, and add to the same pan. This keeps in all the flavour. Stir in the pre lentils. These are excellent for slow cooked dishes because they retain their firm texture and shape. Next, add a bay leaf and some fresh thyme sprigs. Then the sausages go back in along with chicken stock. Simmer until the lentils are tender, then season to taste. Finally, sprinkle with chopped parsley and serve. Simple to prepare, a cinch to make, and packed full of delicious, hearty flavors. My twist on an Italian classic. Magnificent, easy, bolito misto. My next everyday, effortless dish is slow-cooked aubergine. Dice the aubergine and fry in hot olive oil until colored on all sides. Then add a finely sliced onion and chopped garlic. Cook until tender. Add cooked butter beans and pomegranate molasses, which is a sweet, thick, and glossy, tangy reduction of pomegranate juice. Season. Next, add a can of chopped tomatoes, bring to a simmer, and cook until the aubergine has a gloriously soft and silky texture. Stir through chopped mint, pile onto toasted bread, and finally, for a lovely salty tang, crumble over some creamy feta cheese. Minimum preparation, but slow cook for maximum flavor. Aubergines like you've never tasted before. One more dish that uses time to transform a humble ingredient is perfect slow cooked beef. Start by frying the beef shin in hot oil, seasoning as you go. This is a very economical cut of beef. As it slow cooks, it 
also makes the most delicious gravy as the marrow thickens and flavors the sauce. In the same pan, saute chopped carrots, peeled whole shallots, sliced celery, peeled and chopped ginger and garlic. Next, add tomato puree and cook for a few minutes. Add the shin back into the pan with a glass of dry white wine and the juice of an orange. This deglazes the pan, adding incredible depth of flavor. Pour in chicken stock, season and simmer for an hour and 20 minutes. This dish is brilliant finished with gremolata, a dry Italian salsa made with chopped herbs. Simply chop parsley and garlic together and mix in the zest of an orange or lemon. When the beef is cooked, rich, unctuous and beautifully tender, scatter over the lovely fresh gremolata. Simple, satisfying and crammed full of wonderful tastes and textures. Delicious. Fast to prepare, cheap and easy to make, slow cooked to perfection. Three amazing dishes I guarantee you'll make time and time again. This is my essential guide to kitchen equipment. Everything you need to know about the basic kit that will get you cooking fantastic food. Casserole dish. Absolutely essential when it comes to good home cooking. Why? So versatile. The beauty of this thing is the fact that you can actually use it on the hob or start it on the hob and finish it in the oven. More importantly, cast iron, it conducts the heat. So you can have the gas on absolute minimal or the oven down to its absolute lowest setting and the thing will just cook naturally. Casserole dishes are surprisingly versatile and a great investment. You only need one and if you look after it, it will last you a lifetime. Brilliant for One Pot Wonders. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. I'm teaching you my slow cooked favorites. Next up, my guide to getting the best value from your butchers. One of the biggest bills in the kitchen is gonna be for meat. So it's crucial you keep costs down, but that doesn't mean sacrificing flavor, especially when you use some slow cooking magic to get the best from cheap cuts. To get value for money, it always pays to ask an expert. And fifth generation award-winning master butcher, Danny Lidgate is a man in the know. One of the great things about going to a butcher is they're gonna have more cuts available than most supermarkets. So you're gonna see things that people don't know about so one example might be the beef ribs, a great product for slow cooking in the oven. Especially cooking on the bone, you're gonna get more flavors from the bone. There's some really nice pieces of juicy meat. These are only used for mince in the past. Now people are using it for braising or slow braising or even barbecuing it with some really nice marinades. The ox tail are less popular now than maybe they used to be. Small little muscles make up the tail. Once that's slow cooked, they all fall apart. Really tender, juicy meat. Also, oxtail is sublime in stews, curries, and soups. Another great cheap cut for slow cooking is one you saw me using earlier, lamb's breast. It's one of the least expensive cuts of lamb, and it's also delicious slow roasted or stewed. Here we have the shin of beef, where you can see in the shin, it's made up of lots of little different muscles. These are always moving, always doing work, so slow cooking will give the best end results. It's gone out of fashion a little bit, but it should be enjoyed by everybody. It's a fantastic piece of meat. Here we have some ox cheeks, and when they're trimmed, you end up with a really lean piece of meat. Obviously with the cheek, the cow's always eating, munching on grass. This means they need a lot of cooking. But essentially, it's a really nice, healthy, lean piece of meat with fantastic flavors. Ox cheeks also make an incredible ravioli or ragu. And if you're a pork lover, why not try pork neck? It's a succulent alternative for a slow Sunday roast. Here we have a muscle from the shoulder. It's called feather blades. The reason it was called feather blades is because when it's cut, each piece looks like a feather. The gristle tends to be slow cooked, and the more it's cooked, it will turn gelatinous, giving a lovely jelly and juicy liquid to the meat. Fantastic for casseroling, pies and stews. There are so many cheaper cuts, which are brilliant for home cooking. It's important with all these forgotten cuts to find out how to cook them. Don't be scared of them. They're really economic, but full of flavor. And the end result is a fantastic meal. As a chef, one of the biggest kicks I get is taking an ingredient that doesn't cost much and turning it into something that looks and tastes like a million bucks. My next recipe turns what used to be a decidedly unfashionable cut of meat into the star of the dish, fit to grace any table slow-roasted pork belly with fennel. Slow roasting, 
works better on fattier, tougher and unfashionable cuts. Whether it's a cheek or even a neck or this amazing pork belly. It's a fantastic way to transform cheap cuts into amazing melting perfection. Take a very sharp knife, bring the pork belly towards you so you're over it and you've got all that pressure and weight. Using the tip of the knife, I'm just sort of nicking it and go across the pork belly. Long strokes with the knife. Take your time, turn it 180. This time, what we're doing is just sort of cutting those nice little sort of diamonds. But as that starts roasting on top, it starts getting nice and crispy. Take little handfuls of salt and just sort of rub it in. Bend it over and in all those cracks. Really helps to get a nice, crisp crackling on top. Roasting tray. Get it really nice and hot. Take a whole bulb of fennel. To intensify flavour and to keep the meat succulent, I'm braising my pork belly with strong, vibrant spices and vegetables. Crush and peel three whole cloves of garlic and add to the fennel. Olive oil in. Fennel in. I like the nice, strong aniseed flavour that goes with that nice, rich, dense pork. Fennel seeds. Delicious. Star anise in. And just a couple of cardamom seeds. And wow. They're like little bangers, like little firecrackers. Incredible. Lovely. Fresh bay leaves. Get your pork skin side down. Just sear the top of that fat. That locks in all that amazing flavor. Then I'm going to flip it over and get it nice and crispy. And then I want fennel seeds embedded in those little cracks. Now, some white wine. The minute that white wine hits that pan, you can just smell that light fragrance from the fennel. Allow the wine to bubble away and reduce until the alcohol has burnt off. Time to have the stock. Now, the stock goes in just underneath the skin, so it roasts on top. All that meat under there is going to be submerged, because what happens in the oven? The top goes crispy as anything, and the stock reduces and braises at the same time. Really important that you bring that back up to the ball before it goes in the oven. Otherwise, it will never boil, it'll never get up to temperature. It smells incredible. Slow roast the pork belly at 180 degrees for two and a half hours. Look at that. You've got that nice, crispy skin on top. You can see how much of the stock has evaporated. Put that onto the board. It looks stunning. To make a delicious rustic sauce with the flavour-packed contents of the roasting tray, first, get rid of the excess fat. Take a couple of slices of bread. It's like a perfect sponge because you just lay that on top and drag it, almost like a net, and it just absorbs all that fat. If you want the perfect fried bread, trust me, stick that in a frying pan. A nice teaspoon of mustard. Whisk that in, and then simply simmer for a few minutes before pouring into a serving jug. Mm. With your pork belly, always use a nice serrated edge knife. You can hear that. Oh. That is amazing, incredibly tender. That belly of pork is going to almost melt in your mouth. You've got that sweet meat under that crispy, belly of pork. What an amazing way to cook a very cheap cut of meat. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First, how to make a fantastic chicken stock, a classic slow cook recipe that gets amazing flavor from simple ingredients. Chicken stock. The vital ingredient to good cooking. It transforms sauces. It's a fantastic base for soups. And more importantly, it's so easy to do. A little bit of love and care at the beginning, and it cooks itself. Right, step one, chicken carcass into a high-sided pan. An onion. Doesn't need to be finely chopped. The vegetables flavor the stock. Onion in. Then from there, cut your leek. 
into nice big solid chunks. Roughly the same size as the onion. So all the vegetables cook at the same time. And then our carrot. Celery in, garlic, and then a nice sprig of thyme. That helps to really give depth of flavour to the chicken stock. A couple of bay leaves and some fresh parsley. And then peppercorns. Pan and just lightly crush them. And a little pinch of salt. And now just cover the vegetables and the carcass with cold water. Just cover the chicken and the vegetables. Bring it up to the ball as quick as you can. Now, as it comes up to the boil, a really nice skim. Take the base of the ladle and swirl that around. That pushes all the grease and the impurities to the side of the pan. Then get your ladle and just tilt it. If you don't skim all that off, the stock becomes very cloudy. People's impression of cooking stock, that it needs to cook for three, four hours at a time. This is one chicken carcass. Let that boil away gently for 30 to 40 minutes maximum. Now, we're going to pass it off. Let's take a sieve, place that over the pan, and then just pour that in. It smells amazing. It's aromatic. The colour is absolutely beautiful. And there you have the most amazing stock. When you need to season meat in flour, a great tip is to place it in a plastic bag to dust it evenly. Using flour also helps the sauce to get nice and thick during cooking. When browning meat, fry it in small batches. Don't crowd the pan, otherwise it won't sear or colour properly. When slow roasting meat, line the bottom of the roasting tray with chunky vegetables like onions, fennel and carrots. They act as a trivet to keep the meat from boiling in its own juices. Plus, the veg can be the base for your gravy later on. After slow cooking, baked on residue can be tough to remove. But if you boil water in the pan, it will dissolve and break down. Then simply pour out and wash with soap and water. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store.